Welcome to In Conversation With. My name is Rianette Whitehead, FA News Editor, and I have regular conversations with different people about different things in the insurance and financial services industries. My guest today is Craig Scher, Head of Research and Development at Discovery Invest. Welcome, Craig. Um, Craig, you've been with Discovery for quite a few years. Um, can you please share your career leading up to your current role with me? Sure. Um, so, so yes, I've been at, at Discovery Invest for, for quite a long time. It's roughly, it's roughly 20, 20, 21, almost 22 years now, um, which I guess is hard to find someone who sort of stays at the same company for such a long time. But um, I have to say, it's been a it's, it's been a wonderful journey. Um, I, I actually I uh, I I'm I'm an actuary, so I qualified as an actuary, and I joined Discovery uh, right out of right out of varsity. Um, at the time, I I was in in the Discovery Life area um, with R and D and product development and that type of thing. And then when we launched Discovery Invest in two thousand and seven, I was the the head of uh, research and development for Discovery Invest. Um, at the time there, there was Discovery Life and Discovery Invest was sort of under the same banner. It was sort of one company. So I was, uh, at, I actually migrated to be head of R&D for, the, for, the, for, the, for both of them. Um, and then Invest sort of split off and, and, and that's kind of been my, my role ever since, um, sort of focusing on the Invest part of the business. Um, we've, uh, we've done some, some wonderful things. We've, uh, you know, the, from the launch of Discovery Invest to the launch of employee benefits, uh, Cogent, the, the DFM asset manager that we have. So really it's been quite, uh, I, I guess, I feel quite privileged to have been in like all these different areas and really seeing the whole of financial services, I guess, from, from the same desk. Um, yeah, I guess that's, right, my, that's my career now. Yeah, I can feel, I can feel the passion. Um, what is it that gets you up in the morning and what are your passions within your role? I, I, I feel the passion, so it would be great to hear more about that. To my mornings. Uh, my my mornings are probably the, the busiest part of my day. Um, I guess I wake up early, I, I study, I spend time with the family and kids and that type of thing. Um, ironically, I'm I'm very, very disciplined I, uh, I i spend a i'm very routine my wife would say that i'm a, i'm a creature of habit everything is sort of in it in its place i tend to do things in the in the same way but i guess that's the one side but it, but at work what i what i love most about it i guess what gets me up in the morning is the fact that it's uh it's so fast paced and it's so different every single day I, you know you could you could plan to come in and be dealing with with one thing at the office and end up dealing with something entirely different um, that, you know, that you, you never, never expect. It's sort of a, it's a world full of curveballs, I guess you, you would call it. Um, and I, uh, I, I, I love that. I, I love the fact that, that it, could, it, it could change, that it's varying all the time. Um, I, love, I love the fact that we've started a lot of different businesses. And I, I think that gives a... Uh, you know, I guess that gives a lot of energy um, to the to the thing. You never know what you're going to be doing. It's going to be creative, and ah, uh, that's uh, I guess that's what gives me it put. You know, gets me up in the morning. You seem like a fairly focused guy, um, because I think you can get quite sidetracked with within a research role, right? Because there is so much information and so much things you can delve into. You really have to be fairly focused. Am I right? Um, I, th I think that that is that is true. You, you definitely need a, a lot of focus. Although I would say that my my role is probably one that is more uh, creative and and diverse. Um, it definitely has a a hand in, I guess, marketing and uh, mm -hmm. a bit of that flair which I've kind of learned outside of you know typical actuarial studies. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, definitely definitely focus probably one of the one of the biggest things is actually to when you're coming up with new ideas the ability to, i guess to sit and stare at a blank piece of paper or a blank board i've actually got a board behind me which you i guess your listeners can't see but it's actually empty at the moment so to so i guess to stare at stare at this board and 
make up ideas and and sort of come up with stuff. I'm um, together with a great team. I mean, we have a fantastic team doing these type of things. Uh, but really, the I, I guess that there is a a lot around this self discipline of just being able to stare at something for a a long time and sort of come up with something new. Um, we're steering away from our questions a little bit, but as you speak, I, I just want to touch on some of the things. So, in uh, in the work of hybrid working, um, you talk about your blank screen behind you, and that with your team, a lot of the stuff happens. Um, how do you and your team do that? Is it a lot more in office, or are you the hybrid and you found a miracle way to still do that amazing things? Uh, no, no, we actually, I, I do find that, like, I guess, and, and we've seen it a lot at Discovery, that the, you know, I think innovation is best when you're when you're together in person. Um, you you can do it on screens, and you it does it it does work, but it's not nearly it's not nearly the same. Um, we found that one of the the strongest, I guess, accolades of of Discovery is the fact that it has such a very such a powerful culture. Um, I think you've got this sort of culture of innovation, this culture of of doing things, and you you really can only build a culture when you're when you're together with your team. And and our process has always been that when we when we hire people, we obviously aim to hire the best type of people. But what we then do is we immerse them in the discovery culture. We we put them, we give them access to the CEOs of the business. Um, the high level executives of of the business they they join and they kind of you know straight out of nowhere they're sitting with people that really really have been in the industry a long time and they you kind of absorb absorb that by osmosis and the only way you really get that is being together together with the team yeah. um so yes it's obviously a hybrid model is is good in a lot of ways um for innovation i would certainly say that being together is 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 better Thank you. That's um, the, my question was very intentional around that because it is a, a big thing for me, this hybrid and team story. Anyway, yes. um, okay. you've just been on a roadshow to connect with advisors and planners around the country. Why are advisors and connecting with them important for you and for discovery? Okay, so, so advisors are the the key to our business. So we're a completely advice led uh, business. Um, and that they're our they're our bread and butter, and and I guess the the issue with financial services, just in general, I think the issue with financial services is that it's a it's a very complex world. You know, there's a, it's not a simple thing to kind of get through the issue of investing, tax, um, returns, legislation, all these type of things, access to your money, and when you'll have access, etc. So the advice process is is absolutely crucial in in everything that we do. Um, top on, on top of that is all the new products that we try to bring out. We really focus on trying to do new things, exciting things, solve problems in the industry in our own way. So obviously, going to advisors and hearing from them is absolutely, you know, absolutely crucial. You would obviously you can't you can't do this without interacting with your with your advisors. The specific roadshow that we were on now was actually to roll out a new set of set of products. But we are always use the opportunity to speak to people to get feedback, and uh, and that filters through into everything that we do as well. And what are some of the key shifts you've seen in the investment industry over the years, and where do you think um, the industry is heading? It's, a, it's quite a loaded, difficult I question. <laughs> I think I think a lot of a lot of a lot of people would would think that the the shifts in the industry or the trends in the industry are those around. Um, you know, I guess fees coming down, fee pressure, active versus passive, those type of things. Uh, I do think there's much bigger global seismic shifts, I guess, that are that are happening in the industry um, worldwide. I think the, the the first I'd say is there's like this rise of new types of asset classes that we that we've never seen before. You know, things like cryptocurrencies and tokens and all all those like all those good things um the, the the world is also a lot more global so just focusing on just south africa is very 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 difficult so i think a lot of advisors are are leaning on asset managers or dfms to actually help them with uh 
with with their advice process in, in terms of choosing funds and that type of thing. The rise of more types of structured products is there's a there's a lot more in the world of, of of asset classes and investment opportunities. That's probably the one the one trend. Um, the the second is a I'd say something that we see a lot at Discovery we study a lot is is the issue of demographic changes, the uh, you know longevity, living longer, health, that type of thing. And that obviously has a major, major impact on on how much you need to save. The, the entire advice process gets overhauled from those type of things. On top of that, if you know you would they would see this the whole move from defined benefit contribution plans to 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 DC plans to find to find contribution where where all the risk is now sitting with the with the individuals and the, the clients and they now have to navigate, they have to deal with their own long, longevity. So I, whereas longevity is a very good thing for mankind, it's, it's very, very difficult in the context of uh, of, of financial planning. Um, and then and then on top of that, it's not just the issue of, of living longer. You also want to live healthy. There's no point in just having a long life without, without a, I guess, a, a healthy life. So we do a lot of work around um, not just lifespan, but also health span, how many healthy years you'll have in retirement. And I think that a lot more of the advice process it needs to actually focus more on how long people are going to live, but also how many healthy years they're going to have in retirement. Such a pity to give up all that consumption today to save for some time in the future where you might be sick, ra rather be healthy at that time and rather build up a nest egg of, of money as, as well as health. Um, and so, so that's probably a, a huge, huge trend that we're seeing. Um, the uh, I, I guess I guess another one is, is client behavior. The things that you can actually do now that will make a big difference later on, not just in health, but in terms of you know encouraging people to save and encouraging people to save for longer and to withdraw responsibly when they reach retirement. So the behavior side of, of investments is is far more crucial. Um, and then I, I guess the last point is is around just technology that it's like it, I guess it's exploding around the world. Um, I think it's very exciting, actually. It's going to be like a, an enabler of, 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 our, of our industry and of financial advice and helping people navigate all these different these different risks. Uh, I think that we that, that we see it's very it's a very exciting time. Um, what what are you most proud of being part of the Discovery Invest team? Um, it's a again, it's a it's a, it's a difficult question. I think that <clears throat> the, there's not one the, answer, right? No, there's not. There's not. There's not one answer. I guess the the question could relate to financial metrics, which are, which are, which are very impressive. I mean, the company started in in two thousand and seven. It's, I mean, and over multiple years, it's been the fastest growing, active unit trust company in in the industry. So it's done incredibly well. Um, it's just under one hundred and fifty billion in in assets under management. Um, <clears throat> The and and the metrics are very good. I mean, it make that makes it one of the one one of the I guess the premier platforms, and 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 at significant scale. Um, I think I guess what what makes what what I'm most proud of actually is is the fact that the the things that that we've developed, uh, you know, not our, our team as well as the feedback of financial advisors. Are these things are are, are things that are really changing the ways that people. That people interact with financial services, and they're changing the they're changing the savings trajectory. They're actually getting people to do the right type of thing, uh, right type of behavior. It's leading people to to better investment outcomes, and we, and we we measure all these different metrics. We see that people are saving for lot. We give them rewards for doing all these all these right investment behaviors. So when they they save longer, we can monitor how much they top up their investments. We can monitor how much they withdraw when they reach retirement. And we could tell what they would have been otherwise had had they not been this. You know, we have the the models to do that. And uh, and I guess just seeing that this additional huge amount of, of, of value that has been created through behavior change, just through the ideas that the, the company has has generated. That, that that's incredibly um satisfying uh i guess that'd probably be the things that i'm, I'm i guess i'm most proud of our and our, our team and there are, there are some good stories that um that are shared about um the return on investment later on in life so discovery um discovery's philosophy is based around shared value right 
Um, so yes. how does the shared value philosophy manifest through invest and specifically in the work that you do? Okay, so 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 just some some background, I guess, to to shared value. The the idea behind shared value is that if you can if you can encourage people to do what is good for them, um, then and that thing is also good for the company at the same time, then you're sharing you share the the, the value that comes out of that. Um, in 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 the context of of investments, we what we what we do is we encourage we set we have a set of rewards. And the rewards are specifically designed to get people to um, do ex do exactly the right behaviors uh, for retirement planning. So, for example, we have rewards that encourage people to save for a longer period of time. We have a, a reward that tops up, gives them a boost to their investment. When they top up their investments, they're saving more. And, when, and then when they reach retirement, we give them more rewards for withdrawing from their living annuity in a responsible way. And so that's that kind of the, the idea. And if you think about it, all those rewards are very good for, for people, right? They, they'll they save more, they'll save for longer, they won't touch their money all the way through, and they end up with an, a nice big pot of money later on. But 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 if you think about it for a moment, those exact those rewards are exactly the same ones that are very good for a financial services company, they're very good for Discovery Invest. Because if we get people to save for longer, to top up, and to keep their money invested for longer, then we earn management fees off that for longer. So it's not it's not that we're charging anything extra. It's that we're charging for longer. It's the behavior that's actually very good. So we end up with surplus profitability. And it's that surplus profitability that funds the rewards for those clients to do exactly that, th those behaviors. So it becomes completely self-funding. It doesn't cost, doesn't cost anything to, to anyone. It's the behavior that funds the, the the reward. And that's the, you know, that's the sharing, that's the sharing of value. And we've seen an we've seen incredible take up in this. We've seen people doing like really really great behaviors. They chase these boosts that we we do. We've actually just very yeah. recently reached a, a milestone of twenty billion rand in in shared value rewards since we've since we've launched. It's a, it's a huge huge number. That's an amount of money that some of it's been paid to clients over time. Some of it is accruing for them in their policies now. But it's a huge. It's bigger than bigger than some investment companies in in totality, and sure. it's not it's not extra assets. It's shared value. That's just that's just boosted rewards that people um, people have accrued in their policies. Um, so so yes, I, I think uh, I, I guess that's the idea of shared value. That's how it works. Uh, research is one part of your of your job. Product development is probably the more exciting part and the critical part. Um, and the success of the invest business. So how do you manage to encourage encourage and sustain such a high level of creative thinking and energy for and with your team? So the, the, we actually call it all together research and development R and D. So some of it is some of it is just understanding what the market offers. I guess you could call that research, but yeah. a much bigger chunk of it is actually just identifying the problem. And, and finding a way to to solve the problem. We never try just create something for the sake of creating something. We have a we have a generally a problem a problem to solve. Um, the, the 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 way the way we the way we do it and and within the team is firstly the the as I mentioned I think in the beginning we we always try hire the best the best and the smartest people. Um, we we always have this idea at at discovery you have to you hire someone smarter than you are. So yeah. I've hired people at they're all smarter than me and they hire people that are smarter than them and that's like kind of the idea you you want people that are that are absolutely brilliant um and then what we do is we immerse them in this culture of innovation i don't think you can you i don't think you can teach i don't think you can teach it easily but you can definitely show people how it's done and so when they when they come here and they see the the i guess the the energy the optimism and just how people think you know you just get exposed to people at the the highest the highest level of uh of of, of innovation um then you 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 build that you you build that, that that culture and that environment and and some people thrive in it and some people are kind of scared by it you know i think so you kind of you've got to get the right the right type of person put into it but but uh but i think if you're if you're a discovery person and you love that type of thing and you yeah. you'll, you'll Will absolutely thrive. Um, great. A last word to the FI News audience, of which a big part is the advisors and planners, who is an important part of 
your business and of our business. Um, I, I guess a, a last a last word. I mean, I think as I as, as I mentioned in the beginning, I think we 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 uh, we're, look we're incredibly grateful for our financial advisors. I think, and and, we, and and our and our focus is always on 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 creating products that that solve problems. I think a lot of the time we we think that problems can be solved in in certain ways. You know, you kind of think that if only this product was cheaper, or if only the performance had had been better but the the research that we're showing is that and, and we're seeing is that it's often the other things that are far more important you know you can cut you can cut fees by 10 basis points or something like that uh, that's equivalent over 10 years to accumulating one percent in investment returns you know 10 years of 10 basis points will give your clients one one percent and it's often the it's often the things that are overlooked uh, that are far more important, uh, the behavior, getting your clients to do the right type of thing. Um, that's certainly where we're, we're focusing most of our energy. Um, thank you for your time, Craig. Really enjoyed the, the passion that's coming through um, and getting a little bit of insights into your world. Um, this is me, Rianette Whitehead, FA News Editor, signing off.